If you know 10 people with multiple sclerosis, you know 10 different stories. It's a low percentage of people with MS that wind up like this in MS. No movement, you know, from the shoulders down. But it wasn't until uh, 1995 that I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. But the thing that really got me at first, I used to golf a lot and uh, finally walking around the golf just got to be really hard to do. My ankles would just get so sore. I started a band back in uh, 1990 called One Brick Shy. Yeah, there just came a time where I just couldn't stand through a whole gig. Finally just came to the terrible realization that I had to retire from music. You know, truly, uh, it was my identity. You don't determine a multiple sclerosis. You basically eliminate all other possibilities. Multiple sclerosis is lesions that form on the myelin sheath of the nerve endings and sort of like holes uh, in a garden hose and disrupt the flow of the signal around the brain and from the brain to the rest of the body. Uh, in 2011, I was telling people about um, SmartNav. It's a hands-free mouse. Um, maybe you can notice I've got on my glasses, there's a little piece of, of uh, kind of a reflective tape. Well, this, uh, I have a special camera on top of my computer that follows us so I can move the cursor around just by moving my head. A, a friend who was standing behind me, I didn't realize he was there, said, hey, can you do emails and, and Facebook with that? I said, yeah, and lots more things. And he said, we gotta get one of those for Bob. And I said, Bob who? Bob Finch, who, who has the MS and is living in a nursing home. Uh, another a great friend, Dave Layton, uh, took me over there to see him at the nursing home. And boy, I knew where Bob was at, he was like me. And then uh, one day as we were, as uh, Dave Layton and I were uh, leaving Bob's room, uh, Dave said he recalls that I said, boy, he doesn't have to live like that. Because uh, I remember one night I've been not being able to change the channel. I, I joked, uh, uh, imagine getting stuck on the Lifetime channel all night. Oh, the horror. We'll get him hooked up so we can, you know, run the lights in the TV and let's let's get him a laptop and one of those smart nav cameras. And Dave said, well, you know, yeah, how are we gonna do that? And I thought, we'll just email all of our friends and tell them what's up and see if they'll donate some money. And man, we figured we needed about $1,400 and we had well over 2,000 before we knew it. In 2017, uh, Bob Finch passed away. So uh, the notion just said, Dave, why don't we take this memorial money and what's left of that money in the bat fund and put them all together and create uh, an actual 501c3. We just try to get people together, let them know that their life isn't over, that it's just gonna keep going. And I've had MS since I've been 22, and I'm much older now. And that's kind of what this whole event is about. You know, life is not over just because of a diagnosis. The events like this do two things. Uh, first and foremost, I think awareness is critical. Increasing awareness helps people uh, understand needs of their community members, but also it helps with that early intervention. Raising funds is really important. We need to raise funds to accelerate these cures um, and to provide the programs and services that we do for people. And I, I guess I'd add a third part, which is community building. Our tagline for our walks is Stronger Together. And these are moments where people can come together and feel like they're not alone, right? And that's really, really important. I think maybe probably the most important thing is to have a sense of community. 
for the Fringe Fund. Our mission statement is to provide resources, people living with MS, to help them maintain their independence and quality of life. Right now, 35 different projects the, the Finch Fund has granted money for, uh, totaling a little over $91,000 in our five years. We're really proud of that. Uh, anything from uh, a grab bar and a shower to a, a ramp, just being able to stay, like for me, in my home uh, is everything. Being able to live out in the community and experience things, it just gives me peace of mind. Hi, my name is Greg, and we're going to demonstrate for you a little about the process of writing and recording a song you're about to hear. Uh, I, know, I, you know, I played some piano and, and had written some things years before that uh, I found some software where I could actually write the sheet music out and it would play it back to me. And then uh, I had all these terrific friends that would come in one at a time and, you know, maybe play a guitar part. Gave me a chance to express myself again. And I spent a lot of time concentrating on things I'm grateful for. And it really does help to, yeah, it's huge, that independence. Iowa.